So if someone was to make the argument that becoming a doctor, a lawyer, or let's say a pilot is harder than becoming a director, they would have a very solid argument and I definitely would not argue with that person. But one advantage that those roles have over the role of a director is that it's quite clear what you've got to study and how you've got to prepare yourself for those roles. Whereas, where on earth do you start if you want to become a director? Going to film school often isn't the answer for people. Some people spend their whole lives trying to get into the role of a director and, and, and they're not successful in doing so. Other people spend a year trying to be successful at it and they you know, have a massive hit early on in their career. It completely varies director by director and it's a, just a very, very vague path to the role, to the career. How can you really become better at something that not many people even know what it is. Not many people know what the role of a director is in a film set. That is what I hope to answer in this video. This is how I practice directing. That is a very long intro for such a simple, <laughs> such a simple point. But anyways, let's get into it. This is the third episode of Bad, Becoming a Director, a show about getting good. Let's get right into it. I'm not gonna let the intro of this video drag on any longer because uh, I think you get the point. What I'm trying to say is the role of a director is vague. Most people out there who are common moviegoers don't really know what the role of a director is. People who have directed often think to themselves while they're directing, well, of course this is what it is. But then I feel once I'm done directing a short film and then I, a few months pass and I look to other directors that are directing, I'm like, what are they actually doing? It's It's... It's not a very straightforward career path or career in general. And that is why it's also tricky to figure out how you can become a better director. In this video though, I'm gonna share with you my method, uh, my answer to this issue, and I'm gonna get stuck into it right now. So essentially, this is a practice that for me kind of came about quite naturally, quite organically. My friend Seb O'Connor, who acted in my short film, The Least I Can Do, he wanted to make a show reel and he wanted me to cut it together using clips from The Least I Can Do and from other little bits and pieces that he featured in over the years. But while I was editing his show reel, I was like, there's a bit of an issue here. We haven't got much to work with because Seb had only really acted in The Least I Can Do with a like with a, with a leading role. Uh, he had had a role in Broken Reflection as well, but it was quite a small role. And we were really only working with The Least I Can Do. And I was editing it going, okay, I think we need to add another scene in here. Tell you what, Seb, let's film a whole new scene. Now to film this other scene, I wanted to bring in another actor. And so I reached out to the actress, Amelia Devlin, who also acted in The Least I Can Do alongside Seb. And I said, okay, hang on. Here's what we'll do. I'll make, first of all, I'll make a show reel for both you guys. Second of all, let's make the, these show reels using the same scene. So let's film a scene between you two and then we'll take out scenes for your individual show reels. Then it clicked in my head, okay, we're just, we're recreating a scene. And recreating a scene means making a scene, which means directing a scene. And I was like, this is an opportunity to direct. Fantastic. What I did was I asked Amelia and Seb to go off and between themselves find a scene from a Hollywood film involving a male character and a female character that, that they that they really wanted to act. And they sent in loads of ideas. They sent in ideas from Low Rosie and some film with Leonardo DiCaprio and another film, a marriage story. But then eventually we landed on a scene from La La Land where Seb and Emma Stone's character, whose name I can't remember, they are having a dinner and an argument kind of begins to unfold between the pair. And yeah, we, we've settled on this scene and I said, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend one day rehearsing this scene for me to practice directing and for you guys to get comfortable with the scene. And then the second day we're gonna film it. I'll bring all my equipment and we'll film the scene. And that is exactly what happened. So here's the rehearsal day that went on for me. It's very, very important for actors to be given rehearsals. It's, it's a luxury on most film sets. It's not something that every film set is going to have, but if you have the time to fit in a rehearsal day, 
get it in there because it just makes your life as a director so much easier and it makes your actors life actors lives on the real shooting day so much easier as well and yeah I was really really happy with how the rehearsal days went it was it was honestly very chill we would kind of go in and out of conversation with, with the breaks in between conversations being practicing practices of the scene um, and yeah it really was a fantastic rehearsal day you committed to that I mean, if anything, this project just gets you out of the house to places like this, which is always a nice bonus of production, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, what day is it? Third of October. No, day. It's a Sunday. No, in the context of this filming. Filming! It's filming day. So yeah, rehearsals are complete. Now we're in Amelia's house in the wonderful living room, gorgeous living room. And we are setting up the shots, ready to go. Very, very excited. So the next day I brought all of my equipment to Amelia's house. We set it up in her living room and while I was setting my equipment up, Amelia and Seb had some time on the couch to run through their lines and run through the scenes again, taking in mind the notes that we had all taken on the scene the day before and the rehearsals. And eventually before too long, uh, my, my equipment was all set up and we were ready to film. And one thing that I already was finding this amazing for was uh, setting up my equipment in a professional way having the previous day to direct and to practice these these scenes um, are really allowed me to focus on their performances. And so, you know, with that kind of, with that confidence in the performances being fulfilled the day before, I didn't really have to worry about this on this day. And so kind of being a one man crew, I was able to set up all of my uh, lighting equipment with my mind entirely on, you know, the lighting and the cameras and the angles. And uh, this allowed me to really take the lighting seriously. Now, looking back, I, I definitely would have done a few things differently. If we look at some final shots from the film, um, you know, I think if we, if we look at Amelia's clip, it looks really nice because there's some warm lighting in the background and, uh, you know, the, the light really wraps around her face. It's a little bit out of focus, which is unfortunate. I need to get myself a monitor, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how this image turned out. Um, but then if we look at Seb's image, it's a lot colder, so I didn't really warm up the background as much as I should have. But more importantly, I didn't add enough warmth to Seb's face as I should have. You know, a lot of warmth is coming from Amelia's image, so the fact that not enough warmth then is, is transferring to the image of Seb in the in the opposing shot isn't really consistent but the biggest issue by far in the scene is um, I, I set up a light on a c-stand above Seb in this scene and because I did that I kind of created too harsh a shadow on his face I did not let the light wrap around his face enough which which just kind of created this harsh shadow on his face with face which doesn't match the lighting that is then in Amelia's uh, frame which is just you know a lot softer i think what i could have done instead is taken out the light or at least dimmed it a lot and then i probably could have added a white blanket to the right side of his face from our perspective in the sh in the scene boom shakalaka bob's your uncle tikka masala uh <laughs> what am i saying we had our scene wrapped. We finished it up. And then a couple weeks later, when I had some time, I edited it all together. And you know what? I'm not gonna drag this out any longer. You can watch the clip right now. Here it is. So do you, do you like the music I'm playing? Yeah, I do. I just, I just didn't think that you did, you know? Well, yeah, I mean... You're saying Keith is the worst, and now you're going to be on tour with him for years, so I just... I don't know, I just... I just don't know, I just want to make sure that you're happy. What are you doing? I... Why are you doing this? What do you mean, why am I doing this? This is what you wanted. For you to be in this band. For me to get a steady job. Well, of course I want you to have a steady job, so you can take care of yourself and your life, and... Well, that's what I'm doing, so... Why aren't we celebrating? Well, why aren't you starting your club? <laughs> You even said it yourself, no one wants to go to that club. No one wants to go to some club called Chicken on a Stick. So change the name. Well, no one likes jazz. Not even you do. I do like jazz now because of you. So what, I meant to go out and play Jingle Bells so I can afford oh, some Shangri-La club? No one even wants to go people to? People don't want to go to the club because you're passionate about it and people love what other people are passionate about. You know, it reminds them of, of what they forgot, what they... Not in my experience. Well, anyways, it's time to grow up, you know? And I wish 
If you had something to say that you would have said it before I signed on the dotted line. Just pointing out that you had a dream that you were following and this you were sticking to. This is the dream. This is not your dream. Some guys go their entire lives without doing anything that people actually like. And I'm doing Since something that when people do you enjoy. Care about What's being wrong liked? with that? Why do you care so much about being liked? You can't liked. say anything. You're an actress. All credit for the writing in that scene goes to Damien Chazelle for La La Land, of course, but hopefully you like that scene. Going back to the very beginning of this video when I said, you know, a doctor, a lawyer, a pilot, you know, it's very clear what they've got to do to get better. They've got to study specific things and take specific steps. For directors, I think it's just experience. Not only life experience, but actual practical directing experience as well. And so if you do this with your friends every now and again, you're just going to get more and more directing experience and you're going to get better at communicating with Actors. It's very straightforward. I'm not gonna blabber on about it anymore, but yeah It's great. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay stellar. Peace. Oh Another good connection. Let's go